anchors up, sells it full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. How are you doing today? Doing all right. This this light right here really shouldn't be pointing directly at the camera. I'm not sure what happened there. I'm going to try and put my head in the way of it for now. That's how I'm doing. I noticed these That's things. Using head. I, That's using your head. <laughs> unlike that joke, this tradition is new and good. <laughs> All right. We are back for another Know Your Enemy edition. This time, to Sparty. Michigan State Spartans. Uh, Ohio State. Um, their first uh, their first road game of the season, heading on up to East Lansing. Uh, yep, yep. The quote unquote Jared, the quote unquote first um test for Ohio State. Ohio State's favored by twenty five and a half. Or how how solid do you want to go on that word test? Their first Big Ten opponent. Okay, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> now, I, I mean, I will say that like 25 points, I think is the smallest. Um, is, is it fair to say that's the mm-hmm. smallest it's, 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 spread it's so far the, this year? So there's yeah, that. It is. It, it is fair to say that. So, so there is All that. Right. Um, Michigan State coming into this game, three and one. Yeah. Three and one, they they are not two and two or one and three coming in. They are three and one coming into this game, Jared. Uh, so what? Could tell us a little bit about Michigan State here because this is this is a completely different team, yeah. completely different team than what we saw last year. Completely different. New head coach. Um, you have Jonathan Smith uh, joining from Oregon State. You know, he he saw the writing on the wall as far as the uh, future of the Pac-12 and said, you know, I'm going to go join an actual conference. While you getting out while the getting's good, getting out while the, you know, his name was still notable. Listen, and like, say what you want to say about Oregon State last year. Where, you know, they had, I would say they outperformed their expectations last year. And here, here's the biggest compliment I can hand to, to to Jonathan Smith. He made DJ Uyunglele look good. And, and if you've watched any Florida State so far this year, or watched Clemson, that's actually impressive. Yeah. So, I mean, that's worth something, right? DJ Uyunglele has been in college football for what feels like a decade at this point, and he's had one good season, and it was under Jonathan Smith. Sure. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, he brings with him um, some talented players from Oregon State. Uh, Aiden Childs, the quarterback from Oregon State. Uh, tight end Jack Velling from Oregon state and uh, offensive lineman, probably the premier offensive lineman on the team, Tanner Miller uh, from also, you know, obviously from Oregon state. Uh, So, you know, he brings with him some key components. There's a lot of transfers on this team. Um, Not a transfer, but a brand new face in East Lansing is freshman Nick Marsh, who is already one of their two best wide receivers on the team. Uh, you know, they, they have two, they have two really, you know, two pretty good wide receivers on the team. And one, like I said, one of them is a true freshman. Uh, the other one uh, is uh, Montori Foster Jr. Uh, they collectively have very similar yards. They both have a touchdown. They both have you know, 11 receptions to 17 receptions, both about 200 yards, give or take. Um, it does feel like Marsh might be getting more of the big plays, whereas Foster might be getting more of the, um, possession type receptions. And of course, Jack Velling has 12 receptions for 159, 59 yards on the year so far. So, you know, they're spreading it out across three guys. Quarterback is... 
he, he's trying. He's trying his best. Uh, um, he's getting the ball around. He's getting some, but but he he's already thrown seven interceptions on the year. He's already been sacked five times on the year. I appreciate that, Austin. Um, and he's he's shooting just over fifty percent for the year. Um, his running stats are not bad, not necessarily impressive either. You look like an interception, Jared. Not sure what that means. <laughs> yeah. So Aiden. Aiden, um, you talk for anybody, a second. I'm going to fix this lamp. It's driving me nuts. Sure. Uh, so Aiden, a little, little backstory about Aiden. Yes, uh, Jared mentioned he came from Oregon State, but uh, as a prospect, he was one of the best quarterbacks. He was he was ranked seventh in the country when he when he committed to Oregon State, and as a transfer, he was rated as the second best quarterback in the transfer portal this year. Now. The stats don't really indicate that that much. Yeah, he's he is uh, a little more than fifty percent completion, but four touchdowns and seven interceptions, almost double. Yeah, the interceptions to touchdown ratio, not good. That's that's not good. Very talented. He, he's, he's yeah, he's a very very talented dual threat quarterback. So, and we and, and to me, I think this is a definitely a big concern for Ohio State defense, especially what we saw last year when we had a somewhat mobile quarterback for three quarters of the game, about three quarters of the game and made plays on, on his feet to get first downs when he needed to. So I, I'm really curious on what, what this defense is going to do to slow down Aiden. Cause he's, he's, he's definitely not afraid to, I would, to uh, pull back and run. I would suggest trying to intercept the ball would be my recommendation. Um, I mean, these are his first starts of his career. Uh, last year in his true freshman season at Oregon State, I is he redshirt or is he? I forget. He didn't point. To, he didn't get any stats at least in twenty twenty two. He only played in two games in 2023, attempting a grand total of three passes. So this is his first real action. That has to be said. Like, you know, it, it's not like he, you know, Ohio State brings in a quarterback with a ton of snaps under his belt, a ton of college experience under his belt. Aiden Childs isn't that. He had thrown three passes in competition in college football prior to this season. And that inexperience is showing in, in the interceptions. You know, that's just, that just is what it is. He's a young player. Will he get better? That's yet to be seen. Yep. Uh, as Kyle said, there is talent there. Um, you know, and we look at the schedule that they've played so far. And, like, Maryland's pretty good defensively. We'll say that. Also, I'm willing to say that about Maryland. They're pretty good defensively. Um, Florida Atlantic's Florida Atlantic. Then there's Prairie View. It's Prairie, it's Prairie View. And then they lost to Boston College last week. Um, in a close game, but they lost nonetheless. Uh, it should be noted that the Florida Atlantic and Maryland wins were also close games. And I, I mean, even at three and one, BC isn't too bad. No, they are not. No, they are not. Like, I'm not, I'm not, listen, I dare I say, and I, I don't know, maybe I can go back and listen to our Big Ten preview episode that we did a few weeks ago. Dare I say, so far, Michigan State has outplayed their expectations. Like, I, I I, think we were expecting Michigan State to be worse than they are right now. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, would, I would agree with that. Yeah. But. I mean, even if you look at, like, their defensive numbers, I think... I don't have the Pick 6 preview thing up right now. 
But like I remember looking through the pick six preview and they were dogging their defense bad, like position group wise. None of their defensive position groups were showing up in the like in the they were all like bottom quarter of the league based off of pick six preview rankings. And if you look at their defense right now, points per game, only 19, 33rd in the country yards per game. Under 300 at 26 in the country. Yards per play, just over 4, 20th in the country. Yards per rush, allowing only 3.1, which is top 20 in the country. Turnover margin, well, that's probably why the games have been so close. That's probably why the games have been so close, because they've been turning the ball over a lot. But at least on the defensive side of the ball, I'd say they're greatly outperforming expectations. Now, Maryland, I said before, I think that's a very good defensive football team. Offensively, eh. Boston College, kind of the same. Um very good defensive football team so far. Pretty good running team so far. They've not been tested yet offensively. You know, then there's Florida Atlantic and Prairie View, right? You can look at these defensive numbers and be impressed. And I am impressed, by the way. Like, ever, a lot of teams have played just cupcakes up until this point. And Michigan State has played... At least two Power 5 teams already, at the very least, which is more than Mm -hmm. Ohio State can say. And the defensive numbers, with the exception of yards per pass at 52, they're in the top 30 in most of the, or at least near top 30, in all the important defensive categories. Austin Snyder kicked some... Last week after fielding, messed up, and got his black stripe removed. Nice. Uh, rough back-to-back with us in Oregon. Yeah, that's a bad draw for Michigan State. That's a tough draw for Michigan State. So, again, we can talk about how good is Maryland's offense, actually, and how good is Boston College offense, actually, and, oh, it's Prairie View, and, oh, it's Florida Atlantic. Okay, but still, I I think these are, considering how bad we are expecting their defense to be, I would say, at the very least, they're highly outperforming so far. We'll see what happens when they play Ohio State. Yep, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, Defensively, I know we talked a lot about offensive side here. Uh, Defensively, though, uh, they got... They got a lot of experience. I would say if you look up their roster, the vast majority of them are seniors here, including their their two main linebackers. Um, Everybody would recognize the name Cal Halliday. Yep. Um, He's been he's been with the program for forever here. Uh, And as well as Jordan, Jordan Turner um, as well. Uh, two two senior senior linebackers who are leading the team in tackles and uh, as well as uh, defensive lineman uh, Chris Bogle, who's uh, also a transfer senior, uh, leading the team also with sacks too. So those three are kind of leading the way uh, with the the front uh, six or seven, depending on what how they play their defense here. But I think but they're. But their main player, I think Ohio State really has to keep an eye out, is safety, nickelback, wherever you want to put him, uh, Angelo Gross. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of all over the field, um, already has an interception and a few pass breakups already for the year, and 19 tackles already for us as a safety. So all over the field. Ed Woods also transfers in from Arizona State. Um, Probably their better, their best quarterback. So, yeah, it's... Again, this defense is, I would say, at the very least, outperforming expectations so far. So, you know, 
congrats to the defensive coaching staff at Michigan State. Sometimes outperforming your expectations is is the goal. Like that's that's sometimes the most you can hope for. And they are mm-hmm. doing that. Yep, yep. All right, Kyle. Um, right. Anything else any, any... specifically about Michigan State you wanted to talk about? Or do you want to start moving into no. our predictions? Yeah, nothing nothing much. As I, I will say, I know I've mentioned this is this is House State's first road game. Uh, here we are, end of September. It's the first road game. It's a 7.30 kickoff, not 7 o'clock, like it originally was scheduled, and it's 7.30 now. Okay. Uh, Noted. On on the Peacock uh, streaming uh, service there. Yeah, Jared with a deep sigh back there. I can I can tell that was a big sigh. Yeah. Got to have one of those, unfortunately, right? Yeah. I, I suppose. But, yeah, the, the, I'm... It, it is Michigan like State. Office. It is Michigan State, and Ohio State, Ohio State should be able should be able to take care of business here. But really curious on how Ohio State does on the road at night for the for the first time. Um, actually, in both was it both times? Yeah, they haven't played a night game yet either. I don't think that's true. Did they play a night game? I believe no, so. No, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. I Have they? So. Western Michigan. What? What? Their spikes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, on the road though. On the road. <laughs> on the road. First here, road so. game. With a with a mobile quarterback. So yeah, we'll curious on see how the defense responds after. Uh, he has, he has ninety five. After a lackluster weekend. He has ninety five rushes through four games. How much? How how mobile do we really want to? I'm just, I'm just saying. Yeah. Right. No, no sun for, for Innes to lose the ball in, as Spikes points out down in the chat. All right. Um, All right. Yeah, that's it. Uh, we're going to move into the predictions. But before we move into the predictions, I want to encourage everyone to check out the sloopcast.com. Um, at the sloopcast.com, you can find a link. Excuse me. You can find all of our links. Uh, so if I mention a link, but maybe you're driving or maybe you're just not in a position to whatever, you can just go to the sloopcast.com and find all of our important links. Uh, some of the ones I want to highlight are uh, our Patreon page. You can support us for as little as $3 a month. Um, yes, join us indeed. Uh, you can plug our uh, podcast feed into your podcast app of choice using rss.thesloopcast.com. Um, come hang out in our custom community at discord.thesloopcast.com, our private community, uh, our YouTube page. If you only listen to the audio version of this, there are visuals uh, and you can see those visuals at youtube.thesloopcast.com. Um, and we have two separate merch stores, one merch store that does like Ohio State centrics excuse me, not Ohio state centric stuff. That would be illegal, but sloopcast centric stuff at merch.thesloopcast.com. Uh, but if you just want like Ohio stuff, just some merch that just celebrates the state and some cities within the state as is, you can find those at seven zero seven one seventy seventy one dot the sloopcast.com. Here are those ads now. All right, Kyle. Let's move into our predictions. Yes, sir. So, first one here, we have Ohio State. Player to watch in this game. Am I going first? You going first. Who's going first? I'll let you go first. I'll let you go first. Am I going first? All right. Ohio State player to watch this game. Um, I'm just going to say, I'm going to say the defensive tackles in general. Um I, I I don't want to see this offensive line get pushed. I'm tired of seeing, excuse me, the defensive line. I'm tired of seeing the defensive line get pushed. I want this line to become a solid brick wall that is impenetrable. And we're in Big Ten play now. And now's the time to buck up. You know, mm-hmm. we don't necessarily know what's going on. If Ty Leak Williams is going to be back this week or not. Uh, quite frankly, it doesn't matter. We should have, you know, the plan 
at this time last year was that Ty Leak wasn't even going to be on the team this year. So if you don't have people to fill in if Ty Leak can't play, that's a fuck up. Quite frankly. So Ty Leak or not, the defensive line, but especially the interior defensive line, needs to really solidify and, you know, at the very least, stay grounded, stay in place. Don't get moved. All right. I have, I think it's a name that's repeated almost every week, but I'm going to say him for the first time here. Sony Styles. I have Sony Styles on the defense side here. Uh, <laughs> the, sorry, I thought Jerry was going to react there. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> I I feel that Sony Styles is going to kind of have to really keep an eye eye out on the quarterback just to make just to keep him in check there. And with the athleticism that Sony Styles has, I I think he's going to play a key role in keeping Aiden in check. Good call. Good call. Uh, our guest picker this week is the infamous Sun Card. Uh, who does he have as the Ohio State player to watch? He says here, I have a feeling this will be the week that Brandon Ennis gets some solid first team reps and scores a touchdown. Now the question is, what kind of touchdown? Kyle desperately needs a punt return. <laughs> it's 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 yeah, getting bad. After after what we saw after what we saw last weekend, I'm I'm not putting any money down. All right, Kyle. Enemy player to watch. Who do you have as the enemy player to watch? Mention his name. I'll mention it a third or fourth time here. Aiden, Aiden chills. Like he's, he's going to be the difference maker for Michigan state Childs? to Childs. Excuse me. I think to, so. To keep them. But what do I to know? To keep them in the, to keep Sparty in the game here. They're, they're going to have to score points and they're only going to score points if they can keep these drives moving. And it's going to be off of the feet off of the quarterback. Yeah, um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with you know I, I I like both of their wide receivers. I like Nick, the true freshman Nick Marsh, um, Montori Foster Jr. However, it seems to be the possession guys that sometimes get the best of Ohio State. Not so much the big play guys. It seems to be more the underneath multiple reception type of guys that that get under Ohio State skin at times. Don't want that happening. Um, by the way, I don't know if we ever mentioned uh, K-Ron, Lynch Adams, or Nick Carter, their pair of running backs by name before, so I just wanted to do that real quick. Um, roughly even yards on the year. Um, again, to me, it's more, you know, going back to what I said about the Ohio State players to watch and the defensive tackles and not wanting to get pushed around. To me, that's more about the offensive line than it is the running backs, or rather the offensive and defensive lines than it is about the running backs. But yeah, uh, regardless, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh, Foster Jr. What does Suncard have to say? He says, according to Chat G- GPT, Sparty's three best players are Nathan Carter, um, Jaco- Jacoby Winman, mm. and Trey Mosley. Mm, each I, of what mm, each of which I have never heard of. I don't know if they exist. At least not <laughs> on this particular roster. Yeah. Chat here yeah. here's a little thing about Chat GBT I want everyone to know. If it doesn't know the answer, it will lie to you. Yep. Yeah, so that's it, it's that's it, it pro- built it, it into pro- its it, programming. Yeah. It won't it say probably, I don't know. To to finish, he said it probably wouldn't matter if they had Plaxico Burrs, Le'Veon Bell, Kirk Cousins, and TJ Duckett. Uh, it would matter if they did. I hate to break that to you. That would very much matter. So he doesn't have an answer. So we're going to move on to we're going to move on to key matchup. Key matchup in this game. I'm going well, to not at their here. current age. That's a good point, yeah. Spikes. It's it's Ohio State stopping stopping. Uh, Stopping the run, stopping uh, the quarterback run here. We, we saw we saw a little bit of the issue before uh, before the quarterback went down last weekend. 
I, I could see a potential issue with this with this defense here. So I'm I'm gonna say Ohio State versus the quarterback run. I'm gonna say it's just okay, I'm doing it. I wanna do it every week. I've resisted doing it so far, but it's really OL for, feel like it's becoming it is, an issue. Here comes the O L D L. But specifically here it comes. but specifically here it comes. here it comes. Specifically the Michigan offensive line. Because I feel like when I did this last year, it was the Ohio State. Michigan? I said State, didn't I? I said Michigan State, did I not? I feel like last year I would I would always say you did not. My bad. I feel like last year when I would do this, it would be the Ohio State offensive line versus the opponent's defensive line. Uh, th- this year I'm doing it the other way around. Or at least this game I'm doing it the other way around. Um, it's. Michigan State's offensive line versus the defensive line of Ohio State. All right. Sun card says here, I want to say the biggest matchup of this game would happen if Sparty decided to wear a super cool all black uniform versus Ohio State's cocaine white uniforms. I mean, I'm down. Yeah. But on a serious note, I want to see Ohio State to get off the field on third down. So the key matchup is Michigan State on third and less than eight. Sun card alluding to the fact that I've on multiple occasions during the I've had the sloop pick graphic up this entire show. Know your enemy. We're doing know your enemy. <laughs> that during many know your enemy Michigan states in the past, I have re- I, I've made the case that Michigan State would have the coolest uniforms in all of sports if they were black and white instead of green and white. I wonder if he's alluding to that. He he's one of our longest term fans. So that might that might be a that might be a sloop cast <laughs> lore answer. Yeah. All right. The spread in this game as we locked it in. It has gone down. But as we Someone locked it in, it is Ohio. Yes. Yeah. As CBS uh locked them in, Ohio State was a twenty five and a half point favorite. I think that's down to twenty Three and a half, I think it is. It moved, I believe. And Kyle, that is not enough. <laughs> mm-hmm. I it's, agree. it's it's so not. What you, so what do you got for your? I've my my score prediction, and I'll pull the I'll pull the graphic back up. My score prediction has been on the screen the entire time. Uh, uh, I I did not notice it. it, it <laughs> Yeah, I have 49 to 10. I feel like that's a good... It's not a nice, Jared. It's not a nice. I don't feel like this... Because the defense is better, because the offense is a little more plotting, I I don't feel like we're going to hit that 69 mark too often this year. Sorry. I haven't done... I haven't done a nice score prediction all year. The defense is too good. I'm sorry. That's fair. Uh, I, I had a very similar score as well. Uh, not a nice score either, but I had Ohio State 42, Sparty 10. And what does Sun Card have? He says the spread I am seeing now is 24 and a half and the Bucks cover because the because the big logo on MSU's jersey gives Ryan Day full permission to put the pedal down. 45 to 12 for the good guys. 12 is an interesting prediction. Cause so, out of the, so out of the end zone and only field goals then. Or like two point, some failed two point conversions. Or there could be yeah. a touchdown, a safety, and a field goal. I mean, there's a few different ways to get to 12 at least. It's not a super common final score, though. Yeah. Fair enough. Austin, that's my answer. Be careful. You almost said something nice about me by agreeing with me. Don't don't, don't make that a habit now. <laughs> All right. So Suncard here says, I believe, in related to how he feels about how the game will go, 
He says he believes this game will be short with Ohio State choosing to run the ball two-thirds of the time. Sparty will have trouble moving the ball, but will manage four field goals. Well, there you go. <laughs> uh, the reason I picked Michigan State each season is because between 2010 and 2021, they were the team that has taken the most from us, and I haven't forgotten about it. Also, when I look at my watch and it says 1716, I am daily reminded of how we barely beat them in 2012. That was one of the most nervous games as a Buckeye fan. I'm just going to say, Sun Card, I appreciate that you keep your watch on a seven or on a 17 on a 24 hour clock. That, that That's it. That's that, that, that is literally <laughs> the entire observation I have right there. All right, Kyle. Now. Does that mean, so we obviously all picked Ohio State to win. Um, we all picked Ohio State to cover. Uh, we have one more feature to do on the show. That is Austin's over-unders. And we will do that right after this quick, this quick ad break. I'm not going to do the whole spiel. Just go to the sloopcast.com to find... Uh, all the links to all the other things. There's some t-shirts on the screen. There's some more t-shirts on the screen. Check out that stuff. Here's that ad break now. <laughs> Austin warns us that the Austin over-unders are wacky. They are wacky, he, he warns. And I believe I saw in a different channel that he said he has his most convoluted one yet was that the word you used Austin convoluted yep all right just just one of them super convoluted though just one of them all right Kyle what's the first one all right first one for for Austin's over unders wacky edition he says Ohio State players with a reception so different yeah I'll say reception at seven and a half. Seems high. That does feel high. Um, I mean, we could go two running backs, a tight end, three wide receivers gets us to six. A fourth wide receiver gets us to seven. I mean, it's not ridiculous. We've had 8, 12, and 6. Yeah, but we've had 8, 12, and 6 in games in which the backups came in pretty early. Um, and I, you know, I, I do expect to beat Michigan State pretty easily, but I don't necessarily expect the starters to be out on the second drive of the third quarter, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm going to go under here. Yeah, Austin. Austin always, always coming up strong here, finding these, finding these really, really interesting, really interesting numbers. So, if I look historically at the past few games against Sparty here, uh, he's he's on to something. Like Ohio State, Ohio State against Michigan State over the years has thrown has thrown the ball to a quite a quite a number of uh, players last year. Mm-hmm. Nine, nine players last year, and the year before that, nine as well. So, okay. so you know, I'll go over. I'm going right. to go over here. All right. Next All right. up, um, next up is Z Kudabak, Aiden Chiles. Chiles. I'm pretty sure it's Chiles. <laughs> I'm going to say Chiles because you know it's it's chili season now. It's chilly season. The hell it is. It's still 90 plus in Ohio right now. <laughs> I know it's still warm here as well. All purpose yards in this game, 203 and a half. Um, that feels doable. Uh, let's see if we say that's like 33 rushing. Let's see. If we say 33 rushing, I don't see it. I'm going to go under. 
I'm going to go over. I'll go over on this one. Yeah, I mean, like I said, you go thirty. If you go thirty-three rushing, that would mean like one hundred and sixty passing, which is, like I said, doable. Those doable. aren't astronomical numbers, but I'm gonna go under. Fair enough. That's fair enough. All right, Howard passing yards at two hundred seventy-four and a half. Hold on, really good. Really good note from Austin in the chat. This is officially the game with the most differences in your picks already, and we're two questions in. <laughs> Kyle, this 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 episode might determine the winner of the season long Austin over unders, because I know he's tracking it. Yep. All right. Howard passing yards at 274 and a half. I don't even have to think about this. This is under. Ooh. Really? You're that confident? I'm going under. Okay. Um, I, I agree I agree with I agree with Sun Card. They are gonna to want to run the ball. They're gonna run the ball all over uh all over Sparty. Wait waste a lot of that clock there, so on the ground a lot more than we'll see in the air, so under. Austin points out that he averages two eighty five a game. I already went over the Michigan state defensive stats, which are pretty good specifically yards per pass at 6.8, which is 52nd in the country. So you could point out if you wanted to, that's the weakest part of their defense, at least statistically so far. Um, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not buying in that the Michigan state off or excuse me, the Michigan state defense is actually all that great. So I'm I'm going to stick with the season average from Ohio State's perspective as opposed to Michigan State's perspective and go over. Awesome. Right. That's three for three, buddy. Michigan State longest field goal made distance at 256 and a half. Uh what has he made so far this year? Um, what the <laughs> hell is, is the did question. you just say, Kyle? You want to try that again? Michigan State longest field goal made distant at 46 and a half yards. What did I say? <laughs> you added a third. I don't know. You, yeah, wow. two, six, 256. Is that what he said? I don't even know. I have no idea. 46 and a half. Sorry, I was trying to pull up his numbers here. Yeah, that would have been a great kick. Yes, 46 <laughs> and a half he kicked that one on the moon. Forget Jeez. Denver. Oh my goodness. Uh, he is eight for eight this year. Okay. Uh, Jonathan Kim is the senior kicker for, for Sparty. Mm-hmm. Eight for eight. Yeah. He under 30 yards. He's, he's made three. Okay. Under 40. He's made two. Okay. Under 50, he's made one, and he's made two. He is two for two for more than 50 yards. Feels like an over. Yeah, it does feel like an over. That being said, that being said, exactly, Austin. How many field goals do they actually attempt? Yeah, I'm... It, this seems like a trick. This seems like a trick to me. I, I am going to go under, even though the stat says otherwise, which means I'm going to be wrong, but I'm going to go under. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just leaning into the meme at this point. I'm going over. <laughs> All right. Michigan State defensive line sacks. Defensive line. The line itself, yep. not the linebackers, yep. not the corners, not the safeties. The defensive line sacks at. Over one. So this would be on um, Chris Bogle. Uh, he's the leading sacker on the defensive line specifically. Um, Jordan Turner, a linebacker, also has a lot of sacks on the year, but he obviously doesn't count. Um, defensive line stat sacks. I feel like they get one this game, and I feel like they just get one. And we have Fryer, who gave up one last week against a pretty good pass rusher. Yeah, I'm going to say under. 
I'll say under for this one. Kyle, you you didn't keep the bit going. I'm disappointed no, in you. I, I don't I don't need to keep the bit going. <laughs> Smith and Tate combined receiving touchdowns at one and a half. I'm going over. I'm going over on that one. Um in a game that might be more competitive than we've seen so far. Um we might see a little bit more I don't want to necessarily say down the field passing, but we might see more aggressive passing in this game, even if that's not like down the field aggressive. Uh, I think they put a lot of a mecha stuff on tape through the cupcake schedule. This might be, this might be a Tate heavy game, I guess is what I'm saying. You know, they're, they're putting all their resources on Smith and on Abuka, and then, oh my God, here comes Carnell Tate. It's, it, it is hard to consistently get touchdowns every game. It, it Which, really is. We have two players. I, I agree. I agree. Unless you're Jeremiah Smith. Yeah, unless you're Jeremiah Smith and you've got four already for the year. Four. But I'm gonna I'm gonna go under. I'm, I'll go under here. Like it's if they get over, great. I great. I'm 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 happy that I that I uh, that I did not get this pick then. But I'm gonna I'm gonna go under. Austin, that's the face I make when I just read the last one for the first time. All right, last one here is Judkins and Trey rushing yards, but every Ohio State sack counts as 25 extra yards and the number is 256 and a half yards so so if we say that's two sacks or three sacks so three sacks would be like 75 yards i'll go so that would take us down to like approximately 175 so or let's just let's say 180 so that's like 90 yards 90 yards and three sacks yeah i'll take that i'll go over all right we we started off strong but we are agreeing towards the end there jared (laughs) we only agreed on two i believe it was fun austin it was fun And that is the last question from from Austin's over unders there. All right, that's it. Um, yeah, let's just end it. Uh, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, I know that. Um, uh, I know that. I think it was Z Spikes mentioned that. Uh, Austin Snyder lost his black stripes. So, curious to see if that he's going to resume kicking duties against uh, against Sparty this weekend. And I think the other important thing here, Jared, is Tyleek Williams still day-to-day. Yeah, I mean, we, we won't uh, get clarity on that until, nope. you know, a few hours before game time. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that I think he was a big, big miss in last weekend's game here and really – trying to stop them down on, on third down there. He was, he was, he was definitely really, really missed there, but definitely, definitely something to keep an eye out against Sparty here. Uh, but that's it. That's, that's all I got here. All right. Um, all right. That's it. That's the end of the show. Uh, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by, uh, a band out of Columbus called Mr. Moon. The name of this song is Mr. Jones. So, The song is Mr. Moon, and Mr. is spelled out M-I-S-T-E-R. The name of the song is Mr. Jones, which is not a Counting Crows cover for the record. Uh, And that is also spelled spelled out Mr. Jones. So we're going to play that song now. If you're listening to the podcast version of the show, if you're watching on YouTube, then you aren't going to hear the song. But there is a link to the song down in the show notes, so you can go listen to it if, if you want. 
So, with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Mr. Moon.